Hello everyone, I'm Brett and welcome to Nightwood Guns. Today we are going to be talking about the Smith & Wesson Military & Police 2.0 Performance Center Competition Optic Ready Equipment with a 5-inch ported barrel. Before we get into the video, I'm an author. I wrote two awesome short novels, Armed Instinct and its sequel, Countdown to Dawn, action books written by a gun guy. They're on Amazon. Check the link in the description below. Buying the books, leaving a review are the number one ways that you can support my channel. And now, onward to the review. So this is my first M&P 2.0. I had a Gen 1 shield back in the day, but with this M&P, I actually had a bit of an issue with it that is personally a deal breaker for me. So be sure to hang around for the end of the review when I start discussing the negatives about the gun and let me know in the comments below if you've had the same experience or not, or if I just got a lemon, I'd like to know. So I got this Performance Center model specifically because this one came with the ported barrel and I'm all about ports and comps nowadays. And I've got to say the first thing that I love about this gun is the ports work. They do business. For its size, this definitely feels like a lightweight gun, but the ports keep it tame and shooting as flat as possible. This gun would shoot phenomenally without the ports, but with the ports, it makes it louder, but oh my God, this thing is just so easy on the follow-up shots. Another thing I love about this gun is the Optics Ready model came with steel, suppressor height iron sights from the factory. If you're looking to co-witness irons with your dot, this one comes with them already. And that's a major plus because most don't. With the MMP 2.0, I love that they have a steel insert in the front here that makes it so if you put a weapon light on there like an X300UB, that you know you don't have to, have to worry so much about over tightening the light or accessory on the rail and causing malfunctions because it's putting too much pressure on the polymer. That steel insert gives you the flexibility to be able to put whatever you want on there without worrying about it. That also adds a little bit of weight to the front end of the gun, which makes it balance very well in the hand. One of the best things about the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 series is it has some of the best factory stippling out there. I think the only factory stippling that I can think of off the top of my head that is better than this, or at least as good as it, is the SIG Spectre laser stippling that comes on the Spectre models right now. So it can save you from getting a stipple job, but more on that later when we talk about negatives. Now, if you're planning on using this for duty or concealed carry, they added a little uh, dingus right here on the slide catch. So if you're at slide lock and you slam a magazine in there, it won't trip up the slide and send it forward. For competition, this can actually be a little bit of a pain in the butt. I know a lot of people like the MMP 1.0 series because you can actually trip up the slide catch when you put in a magazine that will just speed up your reloads. But for defensive use or duty use, I know that that makes some people uncomfortable. So they put that feature on here. After all, it is a military and police gun. If you can't support banning weapons of war on American streets, you're not on the side of police. Something else that impresses me about the M&P series are the slide serrations. The way they're designed, they are super, super grippy. It really bites into your hand, which I always prefer. What's really weird though, is the slide serrations on the front are just down here, which makes them like pretty much unusable. I guess they're just there for aesthetics. So another feature with the Performance Center is it has a tuned trigger from the Performance Center from the factory, which um, is better than a standard M&P trigger, I guess. But now this is where things get a little weird for me with the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0. Uh, it has a major disadvantage, but you can turn that disadvantage into a major advantage. So in my opinion, the Smith & Wesson M&P has my least favorite and maybe the worst striker fire trigger from the factory. And it's because it is an articulating design that is 99% pre-travel. And if you're used to shooting Glocks, CZ P10, SIG P320s, pretty much any other striker gun out there, Walther's, whatever, the design of the M&P trigger is so different from the rest that it can trip you up when shooting the gun quickly. It can cause a uh, trigger freeze or false reset, or you reset too far and then you go to press and it doesn't break, it's still pre-travel. Uh, it can mess you up when shooting quickly. I think if you have a lot of hours behind the gun, you're a competitive shooter and you shoot only Smith & Wesson M&P. I mean, look at how good Jerry Mitchellick is. I think that you could train and get really used to the trigger and run it so good. I mean, I shoot the trigger well, but most striker guns have a similar trigger. And if you're used to that, this one can trip you up. However, that disadvantage, you can turn it into a major advantage because Apex Tactical, everyone knows the Apex trigger is amazing. And particularly for the M&P, is incredible. Apex makes triggers for other firearms as well, but their Apex trigger for the M&P is hands down the best and will get you not just a great striker fire trigger, it will give you the single best striker fire trigger on the market. So in my opinion, if you get a Smith & Wesson M&P, you have a $200 mandatory upgrade if you are a trigger snob or just want a better trigger 
than the one that comes on it. For me, is that worth the 200 bucks? Absolutely, because you get the best out there out of everything. Every other striker gun, the Apex Trigger and the M&P is hands down the best. Now check out this trigger press. There's the pre-travel at the wall. There's the break. Look at that. Let's get the reset in there too. That's it. Like I said, best striker trigger on the market. I also just want to say as far as another upgrade goes, Floyd's Custom Magwell. Huge fan. If you have an MMP, whether you're carrying it or for competition, check out Floyd's Custom. Uh, the only thing is if you get the Floyd's Custom Magwell or any Magwell for that matter, you need to get uh, Floyd's custom base plates as well because the factory base plates will not work in the magwell So just something to be aware of uh, that can get kind of pricey when you get the magwell And then you need to get a base plate for every single magazine that you have So now that we're wrapping up the pros of the Smith & Wesson MMP 2.0 Performance Center I just want to say that this is one of the best striker fire guns that I have ever shot So when you hear me talking about these negatives and why one of them is a deal breaker for me I want you to understand that I recommend this gun whole Heartedly, this gun shoots like a dream and is dead to rights reliable. That being said, nothing is perfect. Let's get into the negatives. Number one, the Optics Ready model comes with plastic optic plates. Now I ran it with an RMR on the plastic optic plate for about 300 rounds, and I'm gonna link a picture here. You could see that the recoil bosses were already taking a bit of a beating. I could see it lasting a couple thousand rounds, but I mean, I wouldn't be the first person to have one fly off the gun if I would have kept shooting it. So just be aware that if you want peace of mind, you're probably gonna have to end up getting an aftermarket metal plate for this thing. Smith & Wesson stands by the plastic plates. I think most people don't have a problem with them. I think torque is very important. You don't wanna over torque it. And that's what could cause the plastic to snap or break. Plastic optic plate, eesh. Next up, I was gushing about the stippling on this gun from the factory but I have a problem with it, and it probably would have led me to re-stippling the gun if I was going to keep it, and that is the stippling, in my opinion, needs to go higher up the gun, because when you are gripping the gun properly and shooting it well, the drumstick on your hand here is crucial to applying grip pressure to the gun, and for some reason, right there is smooth, right where the drumstick of the hand sits on your support hand, so this thing can slip around in your grip, because it's not stippled in that area. So if this stippling went up higher, I would be 100% on board. Now, a minor negative about the gun is the support side slide catch. So it's easy to close the slide. Hold on, never mind. But on the support side, hold on a sec. I'm not kidding you. Oh my God, guys. I don't think, I don't think it can be done. So if you were a left-handed shooter, just know that you're probably not gonna be using uh, the right side slide catch as a slide release. Now, another tiny little nitpick, while the ports absolutely work in making the gun shoot flat and making follow-up shots a piece of cake, this thing absolutely sprays debris and fire out of the ports. So if you ever shoot this thing from retention, be sure to shield yourself from the blast. Now we're going to get into the negative that is a deal breaker for me. And like I said, I'm interested to hear in the comments below what other people's experiences have been with M&Ps because maybe I just got a lemon. At least I'm, I, I'm hoping I am because everyone's been talking about how M&Ps are absolute tack drivers and I couldn't get this gun to group very well. When I had the red dot on here, I was zeroing the red dot at 10 yards from a bench rest like I always do. And I was getting really frustrated because I couldn't, I have something in my eye, Ooh At 10 yards from a bench rest with a one MOA dot, the best group that I could get was a two inch group. Now, is a two inch group good at 10 yards? I would argue yes. I would say that it's good enough for self-defense, for duty use, for competitive shooting because you gotta be in the A zone and you gotta be ring and steel, but it doesn't meet up to my standards. Now, I would normally consider human error, except for the fact that I literally zero red dots all the time, and I also had purchased the SIG Spectre Comp and was zeroing a red dot on that gun at the same exact time and was consistently punching one hole groups with the SIG Spectre Comp with an identical Trigicon RM09 with a one MOA dot. Then when I couldn't quite believe what was happening, I decided to hand off both guns to my buddy who was with me when I was zeroing, and he had an identical experience. Um, I then put it out to 25 yards, shot a stellar group with the Sig Spectre Comp, 
but with this gun, I got a six inch group at 25 yards. And keep in mind, that was from a bench rest. Is a six inch group at 25 yards good enough for a handgun? In most applications, absolutely yes. Competitive shooting, good enough. Ring and steel out at 25 yards, piece of cake. A zones everywhere in between. I'm not much of a competitive shooter anymore. I'm more into personal defense, concealed carry, and my standards for a concealed carry firearm are much higher, especially now that we live in a world where occasionally lightning will strike, there's a mass shooter, and you might be fighting somebody armed with a rifle with just a handgun. And I want to be able to, on command, land 25 yard headshots, and it is unacceptable to me when my equipment cannot match my skill level. Now, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but the tolerances on this gun seem super loose. If I send it into Smith & Wesson, they might change out the barrel and send it back. And if it has something to do with the tolerances on the gun, it probably still wouldn't shoot well. So to fix it, I would probably have to end up getting an Apex barrel, which would be another couple hundred bucks, and have it fitted to the gun. And then I would have to have it ported because the whole reason I got the gun was to have a ported barrel. Once you start adding up the magwell and the trigger and then a barrel and then porting the barrel and then at that point stippling the gun a little higher, this gun is getting to be more expensive than it's worth. Those negatives being said, I would still rank this as such an incredible option, especially if you want to shoot competition, if you want to conceal carry firearm. All that being said, the Smith & Wesson Military and Police 2.0 Performance Center Competition Optic Ready Equipment with the Ported 5-inch Barrel is one of the best striker fire options in the market, especially if you toss an Apex trigger in there. I wholeheartedly recommend this gun to anyone, especially since my accuracy issue is probably just quality control. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my books in the link in the description below. If you're already one of the thousands of people that have jumped on board with my books, be sure to leave a review on Amazon. Other than that, I'll see you next time. I'm Brett, and this was Nightwood Guns. Nightwood out.